you look at your outstanding career at, at Miami, uh, being a first round selection, you, you dominated on the collegiate fields. In college, you covered one guy that's getting ready to go in the Hall of Fame in Calvin Johnson. And you also covered Larry Fitzgerald when he was at the University of Pittsburgh. And you, Pat P, listen to these numbers. In two ball games against those two players, Calvin Johnson and Larry Fitz, Rowe only allowed 36 yards combined receiving. So, Antrell, who was the better pass catcher on the college field? based on your experiences going against them? Calvin Johnson or Larry Fitz? Uh, there was no comparison on college field. Larry Fitzgerald all day. Larry Fitzgerald was, was, was an absolute dog. And not saying that Calvin wasn't, but Calvin was still young. You know, Calvin yeah. was, a baby, was a baby when I covered him. I'm sure, you know, if I covered him later in his career, it might have been a different result. But, um, you know, he was, still, he was still a youngster when I covered him. But Larry Fitzgerald was that dog, like, yeah. It, you know, he, he couldn't be covered. In my eyes, he couldn't be covered. So the only the only obstacle I had, the only thought that I had was, you know, going into that, going into that game, my coach wanted to double cover him. And I told him, no, we're not double covering him. Like, I, I want a man to man. And coach was like, are you crazy? Like, listen, I said, listen, it's either you let me play him man to man or you take him, you, you send another corner with him and let him have a shell over top because I'm playing man to man and I'm going to get in him. I said, I'm going to get in him. And he was like, what? I said, listen, if, if I'm not paying him man to man for somebody else in my spot, it's cool. But I said, I want a man to man. If he beat me, make him earn it. Like, he's going to have to show me that he's going to beat me. I'm not going to give him the victory without him, you know, without me even being tested. I said, right. that ain't going to happen. So what I did was I studied film all week. I studied film, studied film. Larry Fitzgerald wasn't a blazing guy. So I knew, you know, I, my strength was putting my hands on so one thing I knew about Fitzgerald is if the ball touched his hand, it was caught. Right. Like it wasn't nothing you're going to do. The ball was going to be caught. So my whole obstacle that whole week was challenging was don't let the ball touch the receiver's hand. Don't let the ball touch the receiver's hand. His highest point, you couldn't jump with him. For some reason, he might not have the highest vertical, but his timing is impeccable. You remember mm -hmm. Super Bowl. You yep. know, his timing is impeccable. I, I, right there, I got his hand all, all in it, everything. Still come down with the ball. But that's who Fitz was. So I couldn't let him catch the ball. And we just had a great game plan. And, and he was challenged. You know, we our, our, our goal with that game was to give it to Fitz. We didn't care about anybody on the team but to give it to Fitz. And, and he got it. You know, he ended up scoring at the end of the game. He went to the different side. And I think they ran like a cross around. He scored in the, the game. I was mad. I was <laughs> mad because I wasn't on him. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, man, he, he was the best I've ever seen at a wide receiver position in college football. Yeah, Larry was on. A, I remember watching that game. Yeah, that was a that was a hell of a game because you guys went down to Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah, right. I remember that game. That was a hell of a game. Yep. So, Ro, tell me this because I had an opportunity to get recruited by Miami. Why does it seem like top recruits don't have the same interest in Miami uh, as they used to? Because they all going to Florida State. Well, uh, you know, well, he said it right, Florida State. Florida State and Miami pretty much on the same level right now. <laughs> they, yes. they, they, they ain't popular. They, they not popular right now. They ain't popular. Nah. It's not the same. You know, and, and, and I'll be honest and tell everybody, it's not the same. Listen, when we played Florida State back in the day, we knew, listen, this game can go either way because they got some dogs. Right. They got some dogs. And then, like, like me being on defense side, right, and I know my offense. I know the receivers I go up against every day. Mm. And then I go and I see Matt Daddy at that corner. Then they end up getting the freak Cromati at corner. I said, yeah. man, it's going to be a long day for these boys. <laughs> and it just seemed like everything was so poor. Like their defense was intact. In order for you to beat them, like they had to be the ones to make a mistake. Like, because it was just, they scheme. It just seemed like it, it was just perfect at all times. I'm like, damn, like, are these boys really that good or is the scheme that good? But them boys play ball. So yeah. it was like that on both sides of the table. You know, uh, offensively, they had so many weapons. And then when they got Greg Jones, it was like, man, when he when y'all came out of Miami, he, he he murdered us. He murdered us by himself. I think he had probably like 200 some yards. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, and 02, it was that 02 matchup, 2002 oh. matchup. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. It was, it was bad. <laughs> That's why I left. It, it was bad. It was bad. But they don't carry the same weight, man. It's, it's the, the players are not the same. The leadership is not the same. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of recruiting a guy because of the stars, four stars, five stars, this, that, and the other. I'm not saying that that's what they're doing, but whatever it is, 
it's, it's, it's not converting to being a dog on the field. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not seeing enough dogs. You might have one, you might have two, but when we played, Matt, you know, we had 30, 40 dogs. No we had dogs that weren't even touching the field. I, I think that 2002 matchup when we came down to Miami in the Orange Bowl, both teams combined to have like 35 pros. Oh, between easy. us and Miami, 35 easy. pros. Think about that. Easily. And might even be more. <laughs> yeah, might even be more. Yeah, we talk about some of the young guns and some of the right. young kids, but yeah, we had like, it was 30 plus pros between Miami and Florida State. Yeah, but it's, it's not the same. But you know, when you when you have schools with such tradition, like, you know, the LSUs, the Alabamas, you know, guys are, are, are leaning more towards those schools because they're producing, you know, even if they, you know, not sending, a uh, uh, hundred first round draft picks, and you know LSU been killing it. Alabama been killing. It. Those guys have been consistent, you know, top tier for at least the last ten plus years. You know, they, they're the epitome of college football. You know, the Clemson's of the world now. Those right. guys are playing ball, and you know, when you get kids from South Florida, you know, we we follow the trend. We follow. Okay, let's see what's popping. Let's see what guys are selling. What let's see, you know, and, and your program got to be booming. If it ain't booming, they're not gonna they're not gonna go just because. It's the you, you know. And that, back to 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 um, you know, to credit your response, I I definitely agree with that because when I came out, it was two between two thousand nine, two th I'm sorry, two thousand seven and two thousand eight when I was getting recruited by Miami. Like you said, it wasn't the same, you know, because I was a I'm I'm a huge UN fan. Was a huge UN fan growing up. Watched every single game on Saturdays, but going through that recruiting process, it was like. It's, it, it feels a little different. Like you said, going to practice, seeing the guys, you know, wanting to kill each other. And at, next thing you know, they all they all buddy, buddy, hanging tight. But once it's back in between those lines, it was totally different. And I just didn't get that same feel because I used to come down there and uh, watch you guys. Uh, I forget what they used to do with you guys. It's like the springtime when, you, when they used to let the fans and stuff come watch you guys. Uh, spring fest. Mm hmm yeah, I don't think you remember this, but that's like around when that Nike camp had just came out and they used to host it at the University of Miami. Yeah. It used to be a great time coming down there and seeing all you guys, some Norris, you. Uh, uh, I remember seeing Devin, Devin Hester down there. So, but to to, to credit your response, like I said, it, was, it, it, it definitely wasn't the same. Um, you know, I think, you know, getting those guys, I think, like you said, once the recruiting process came such a big deal, I believe they just started wanting to go after those five star guys so they can be a top rank recruiting. Uh, right. But yeah, it, it definitely wasn't the same. That's why I didn't go there. <laughs> I, I, I feel you. I feel you because we, we started having that drop off my last year. Yeah. Um, you know, I just noticed that the guys we were bringing in just weren't, they weren't the guys that left before me. Right. And they weren't like myself. They were, it, it was different, you know, it was a different ball game. And I, and I noticed it, I noticed it. So when, you know, when Miami started that decline, uh, you know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't surprised. Right. Let me, hey, Ro, let me throw a date out to you. See if you remember this date. November the 18th, 2007. What happened on that date? Mm. November, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> November 18th. 2007. 2007. I'm in Arizona at that yep. time. Mm -hmm. That's my third year. Yep. Is that, is that you Cincinnati should, game? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah. You tied yeah. you tied the NFL record with two pick six in the same game off of Carson Palmer. Uh Cincinnati Bengals quarterback at that time. You a record setting day. To say the least, I don't even know if a Cardinals player has done that since two pick sixes in oh, the nope. same ball game. Eric might have to check this. I think Rashad Johnson did it against Detroit. Two pick sixes in the same game. If I'm not mistaken. Well, during that day, the 18th 07, Roll tied the NFL record right. that day with those two pick sixes. Do, what do you remember about those two plays? Break it down for us. The sequences of Taking the ball off and taking him to the house two times. Well, it was supposed to be three. One it was supposed to be called. three. <laughs> yeah, I had three that game. They called one back. So it was supposed to be a record, but it got called back because Antonio Smith knocked Carson Palmer out. 
Oh, oh. and the personal file. Personal file. Yeah. You supposed to have three? It was three. It was three. It was three to the house. Three. Yeah, it was three. Um, and, and and that's that's still sting too to this day because I would I would have been you know in the books by myself. Now I got to oh, share it with people. I yeah. gotta share it now. Yeah. But uh, that game, man, I had a, I had a, I had a little personal vendetta. I, I wasn't starting that year. I got you know I got demoted. I was uh I was a third corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, coach, you know we had a new coach, Coach Wisdom Hunt. He brought his guys in. We wanted to play. I was like, cool. You know I'm not I'm not going to pout. I'm not going to put my head down. This guy don't know who I am. But yeah. eventually, I'm going to get the opportunity. I'm going to show him who I am. Uh, so, you know, Chad, me and Chad and I had mutual friends. And he told he told one of my one of my friends, oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to give your boy that, your business, that business this week. But I can't really do too much to him because he didn't start. Yeah. That hit me a little different. Mm-hmm. It, 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 just, it just hit me different. It hit me. It hit me so different. So I, I got locked and loaded in on that film that week. <clears throat> I knew third, third and three to six. In a certain formation, they throwing that out to Hush Mazada, no mm-hmm. matter what. He getting the out. Yeah. He's getting the out. And it's gonna be a quick out. And I say one thing about Carson Palmer, he was so confident in his arm, he didn't care if you were covered or not. He felt like he was gonna get in there. Mm-hmm. Right. So it was third and five. I said that out coming. So I played him, I pressed him. You were pressing, okay. I was pressing. And within the press, when he was gonna cut, I kind of eased off a little bit. So I can get my foot in that ground and break. So when I break, I broke right up under that out. Mm-hmm. I got it, boom. I stiffed on him, you know, gave him a little whistle dizzle, you know, gave him, gave him a few moves, got to the end zone. The second play, I was lined up at nickel. Um, I can show it, I can show like I was in free safety, but I already knew what I, I already knew what I had coming. I had to go down there, we're playing cover two, <clears throat> inside route, you know, slant, letting let that number two go, go to number one. You know, back yeah, number one running the slant two, number two running the slant. Two. Yeah, they, yes, they come with a, they come with a double follow. I know it's no coming. question. Double they want you to take top. that number two so that number one can be wide open. So what I did was I followed that number two in a little bit and dropped them, and then I just dropped back. <laughs> Boom! Another one to the house, gone. Then the last one I had to the house, I was at safety. You know, they get they were getting desperate. They were trying to score. Mm-hmm. I was at safety. You know, we got some pressure on Carson Palmer. He threw it straight down the middle. I was at safety. Boom! I got it. Boom. That one was probably like seven yards, 70 yards. Took that one to the house, and that's where the penalty came in because Antonio, I mean, uh, Antonio. who was it? Oh, Antonio, Antonio, Antonio clean. He cleaned his clock. And it was, it was, a, it was a legal hit, but just because back then it was on the quarterback, yeah. we called a personal foul. You know, it wasn't, wasn't a nasty hit, wasn't nothing outrageous. He just, he just blocked them, but he blocked, he got them good. Yeah. And, you know, they called it back. So I ended up with three, three interceptions with two touchdowns. Oh boy, boy, you talking about a day? <laughs> and that's the day. That's the day Coach Wizard Hunt realized who I was. Like I remember going to the locker room that day, and like I had tears in my eyes because I was so I was so angry, man. I was just holding in so much anger because I'm like, this guy benched me for one. They got me playing nine yards off. Had to play nine yards off, you know, the years before. And I'm like, I'm not. I'm not that corner. I'm a press guy. Right. If you yeah. let me do what I do, you'll see a different result. Well, you know, nevertheless, I just, I was going to find my way no matter what. One thing I always knew that I was a ball player. It didn't matter because I played nickel, I played safety, I played corner. So anywhere you put me, I'm going to sell. So once they started letting me get around that ball, then they started figuring out who I was. And, mm-hmm. and I always told myself, I said, listen, if I, get, if I ever get the chance, and it wasn't nothing personal, but it was personal. I said, if I ever get the chance, one day I'm going to make him beg me. Mm-hmm. I said, one day I'm going to make him beg me. So when that free agency came around, I got my wish, and they could have they could have they could have offered me the house. Honestly, I wasn't going back to Arizona just because of principle. You know, I felt a certain type of way. I wasn't going back to Arizona. My my mind was made up uh, before any negotiations negotiations even started. I wasn't going back there because I was a man of principle. I felt like I really wasn't given a, a fair shake, and then I end up making my way. And now you want me to stay. I said, but I'm gone. I'm, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go take my time to South Beach. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love it. So now you're talking about obviously in that in that 2007 game, you just alluded to playing different positions. You played nickel. You played safety. So what went into the move in 2008 to you know to 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 to, to turn your your career into a safety? Like, what was the adjustments? Like, what? What went into that thought process of finally moving from down to the line of scrimmage back a little bit more? 
So when I played at University of Miami, I played corner. You know, I was always the, the, pretty much like the boundary corner a lot of times. And I played, I always played against number one receivers. And then I also played nickel. So I got used to being in the action, you know, a lot of tackling, a lot of covering slot receivers. I was just more around the ball than just being specifically a corner. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way the Arizona Cardinals had me playing, they had me playing off a lot of the times. And I just felt like I was isolated and I wasn't, I wasn't showing my times. Like I wasn't, I wasn't getting around the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it just didn't, it just didn't suit me. Right. And uh, at the end of the 2007 season, coach asked me, he said, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to play corner or do you want to play safety? I said, man, listen, I just want to, I just want to be around the ball. Mm-hmm. Just let me be free. You know, let me use my football instincts. Let me use my film study. And I want to be around the ball. So then I just started playing safety and I played nickel a lot of times too. So um, I love, I love, I love when I made that change. It, it, yeah, I think it, it definitely excelled my career. And more importantly, I felt like I was able to, you know, to display my talents, you know, because I was a man who could play corner, who could play safety, who could play nickel, who could, who could do multiple different things. And uh, I think it let me excel who I was and show who I was as a person. So, Troy, Troy give me, give us a little the fans, because we have a lot of Arizona fans on uh, that that's on all things covered. Is, explain your time in Arizona. Oh man, my, my time in Arizona was was a great time because uh, when I first got there, listen, we were horrible. Mm-hmm. You know, we 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 were horrible. Um, I was like, you know, coming from a program like University of Miami, and then you going to a losing program where you win in four games in a season, then you win in five games in the season. Like, man, what is this? Right. You know, I'm not used to this, and uh, the players just got together. You know, we got together, then we started getting more dolls. And more people start coming in, and we just start seeing things form. And then we start noticing, okay, we losing, but we giving up. We we giving these guys a battle. Like these guys, like they they feeling us. We losing, but they feeling us now. And then we just start coming together. Guys just start forming together. We start getting pieces. We start getting, uh, you know, perfect pieces to the puzzle. And then eventually, you know, we formed a team. We had some dogs on the offense side of the ball. We had some dogs on the defense side of the ball. And uh, you know, we made that run. And we made that run, you know, we ran to those, to those Steelers, man, who also had a, a loaded team. That right. team, listen, that team shouldn't have been beat. You know, we gave them a run for their money, but that team shouldn't have been beat because they, they honestly, they were stacked at each and every position. Yep. And we were, the, we were the underdogs and we were just scrapping. We were a very, very scrappy team, but they were the better team, you know, and I, and I knew that. So that's why when we talk about that Super Bowl, I'm like, yeah, it hurt. But I'd rather take that hurt because if I got to lose that way, I'd rather lose that way a million times. Right. Lose that way by a miraculous catch. But I said, listen, they, they earned it. They deserved it. Yeah. You know, and you got to take your hat out to those guys, man. Like, listen, it was all, uh, you know. No doubt. And the thing I like about the Cardinals that 2008 season, they reminded us of who we were in 2005. You know, we we barely yeah. got into the playoffs, but when we got into the playoffs, we were playing some of our best football. Right. And our confidence was super, super high. And Ro talking about when you first got to AZ, I mean, when you first got there, they only had one playoff appearance in 23 years. <laughs> so clearly, you know, they were inconsistent, you know what I mean, right. in the wrong way. But you guys all changed that and you had a big part to play in the change of the direction of the organization. And currently where they are, right now and speaking of that 2008 championship game in tampa you were a part of two iconic plays right one was a santonio holmes catch you was on the field for the other was a james harrison interception return where you were on the field but because of your body position it kind of changed the direction of your teammate in larry fitzgerald and oh by the way i'm happy you were standing where you were standing (laughs) because if you weren't there the likelihood of Larry Fitz making that tackle Pat P before Debo got to the end zone was likely. And that yeah. helped us because we needed that play. But just talk about, because what people don't understand, Ro, for us being players, we know how it feels to be standing on the football field, watching the Jumbotron and not realizing where you at because you're away from the plate. You are on the opposite side where the ball was actually placed at on the goal line. And ultimately the unthinkable happened. And now James Harrison is going the opposite direction, trying to get in the end zone. Take us through that play in that scenario, because when you watch the highlight, you don't you see 21, but it's almost like you didn't realize where you were and who was around you. And Larry Fitzgerald had to kind of run that hump 
to avoid you to try to make that tackle. Right. So, man, it's, it's it, it was a crazy turn of events, right? Like, no question, no question. Right before the halftime, you know, like I don't know if it was just instincts. Or I, I don't know what it was, and I just had a bad feeling. I just had a bad feeling that something wasn't was going to go down. Like it, it just, I'm like, okay, we are going into halftime. You got less than a minute left. You know, I just, I don't know. I just felt like something was just going to go wrong. And when I saw him drop back in coverage and get that interception, I was, I was honestly in shock. It, it felt like, it felt like, like my body went numb because I'm like, damn, you know, did I, did I speak this into existence? <laughs> you know, and like, it felt like my body went numb. And, and honestly, when I think about it now, I'm just looking, I'm like, I honestly felt like I was going to go trip this dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I felt like. That's what I felt in my body. And, and, and I'm stopping myself. I'm stopping myself, but I didn't realize how close I was, you know, to, to, the, to, the, to that boundary line. Yeah. Um, but man, like, listen, when he got the interception, you know, people talk about the run back and all this stuff. But what I pay attention to on that interception is the blocking y'all have on. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Y'all be our players up. Y'all, y'all literally manhandled him. And I was mad about that. I'm like, y'all manhandled everybody who was trying to get him, they literally manhandled him. And he left his jail, got bumped out of bounds, you know, mm-hmm. unfortunately I happened to be uh, you know, in that in that space and he had to run and he ran it to me actually kind of slow his progress down and had to run around and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. If, if he hadn't ran it to me, he definitely would uh would have caught Debo. But you know, I tell people all the time, yeah, that was a crucial turning point in the game, but we still went up, you know, in that game. We still went up. Mm-hmm. So no matter no matter what happens, you know, the game still played out exactly the way it was supposed to be played and, and, and the better team won. Uh, did yeah. we have a shot? Absolutely, we had a shot. But the better team won that day. And, and I can say, I can accept that. And, and talking about the blocking, the week of uh, preparation, uh, while we were practicing, uh, we were practicing at South Florida, if I'm not mistaken. You know I how- saw the I saw yeah. the footage. You, you know how, I and, you, and y'all, y'all boys know how it is, right? Late in the season, you catch an interception against the scout team. You might not go hard to return it. You might get a little lazy, throw the ball back, get ready for the next play. So we were doing that. We were catching the ball, and it was in the rain, but we wasn't returning. Mike T, Dick LeBeau, they called and said, listen, man, when y'all catch an interception, I need the cavalry in front of the ball, the man with the ball, and y'all run to score. Because if y'all do it now, y'all going to do it on Sunday. And you know, we hear those things from coaches. We hear it, and it kind of doesn't really resonate like that. We're like, okay, we're going to do what coach say do. So every after that speech, every time someone caught an interception, it didn't matter if it was the first group, second group, or the third group. Whoever was on the football field, if you caught an interception, you better go find someone to block, and you return it all the way to the house. And literally, when that play happened, we got in the halftime. He's like, yo, that's why great coaches – coach great teams they put you in positions to be successful you just gotta listen and you talk about that blocking that was a huge huge point of emphasis for us because we weren't doing that on wednesday practice but that thursday friday practice every time someone caught an interception we gotta go right we gotta go i, I, I saw i saw the footage of that and i forgot i forgot where they showed that footage but i think they were going going through the, the scenario of, of that play and how it happened and then uh they were showing the footage of y'all in practice yep Blocking everybody, running, crump, getting the man in front of you, knocking them out, and I was like, "Practice made perfect, man." No you question. know that, that it, it becomes second nature, and that's mm-hmm. all that was. When he got that ball, man, I saw y'all literally beat our guys up. You beat them up, made, made them look like little boys on the field. But that's because y'all were prepared for that. Yeah. So, how did it feel being on the good side when Mario Manningham made that catch mm. on the sideline? Uh, versus uh, Antonio Brown making that catch in Super Bowl, uh, whatever. Super San Antonio, Bowl. San Antonio, San Antonio, San Antonio home, making that catch in the Super Bowl. Listen, man, it, it felt good to be on the other side for a change, man. Listen, it, it felt that was good. a great catch by Mario too, boy. Oh my goodness, the safety couldn't have played it any better. No he question. Couldn't have he yes. couldn't have played it any better. No question. So he couldn't have played it any better, and, and Eli. You know, he, man, listen, that Eli, when, when the playoff Eli, is, is he, he's a different monster, man. He's a different monster. And and he just put that ball right there, right in that honey hole, right in that sweet spot. And Mario, I don't know, I still don't know how he made that catch. And but got that's both Mario, feet inbounds. Both feet inbound. Both feet inbound. 
awesome catch on the outside of that shoulder. And just it, it was just it was just great offense beating great defense. That's what no that's question. exactly what that was. Hey, so Ro, go ahead. I was gonna ask Ro un, your unbiased answer. What which catch was better, Santonio Holmes or Mario Minahan? Santonio Holmes all day. Yeah, I, I don't think you can compare the two uh, because Santonio Holmes, how he caught it, the defense scheme that we have for it, the the the, 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 the timing of it is man. Listen, that, that's that's outside of to me. That's the best catch I've ever seen, you know. But the best catch I've ever seen was Odell Beckham, you know, behind yeah. the head. It, that that that's freakish. That I mean that dude freakish. He freakish anyway. But the 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 best moment, like the pure moment of catch, Santonio Holmes. Hey, oh, you know, hey, hey Ro and, and Pat, you remember when we had Brandon Jacobs on the show some months ago? We had a little back and forth because he felt like the David Tyree catch. Yeah, it was better. Was better the helmet catch. But my argument was this, Ro. My argument was Santonio Holmes catches better because it was more. Skill and structure yeah. than anything. The Ty- Tyree catch involved skill, but it was a lot of luck. A lot, a lot of luck. A lot of it luck. was a lot it of a lot luck of involved luck. in that. You know what I mean? Like luck. he probably could never do that catch over again if you paid him. But Santonio, just the toe tap, the hand placement, and if you look at where Big Ben threw the ball, it went over like three defenders. I remember Ralph oh, yeah. Brown. It barely, it barely missed Ralph Brown fingertips. Yeah, and it just yeah. dropped. And just it literally just dropped, man. And he he was stretched out like a like a ballerina, man. Just listen, it's, it's like I tell people all the time. If I gotta lose like that, I will lose like that a million times out of a million times. Because what was the coverage I was in? <laughs> that been look like <laughs> don't make don't make don't make me talk about the coverage. Because yeah, uh Rod Hood was on that team, wasn't it? Yeah, Rod was on that team. <laughs> Rod was on that what, team. What, what, was I like in cover two or cover four? What was the coverage? It was it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let you be a corner. I'm going to let you dissect this. Okay. We was, in a, we was in a box coverage. Yeah, that's okay. what it was. Box. We, and it we was Okay. Hey, so, so bro, bro put, your coaching hat, put your coaching hat on for us because we got a lot of viewers and listeners that might not know exactly what a box coverage is. So go ahead and put your coaching hat on and break it down for our listeners and our viewers. Okay, so for the, on that side, mm-hmm. you have four And that guys. was to the wide side, right? That was to the, that was to the, to the field. Yeah, it, it was yes. to the field. Yeah. So uh, on the back side, we was pretty much playing kind of like a man to man with a guy h- hanging low. And yeah. on on that side where the play happened, we were supposed to have a guy that's playing the flat, which mm-hmm. is the low guy, the low outside guy. We had a, a we had a high outside guy, which is supposed to be exactly where Santonio Holmes caught that ball. Then we have a low inside guy for anything that's coming underneath, and then we have a high inside guy. So. They played. They ran that play a couple of times earlier in that game, yep. and actually, the play right before that, right they ran before that they exact ran same play yeah, the to the other side, side yep. and being yep. overthrew him. Mm-hmm. So the coach knew exactly what was coming and put us in the perfect coverage if the coverage was ran the right way. Yeah, the perfect coverage. So mind you, we have a low outside guy and a high outside guy. They threw the ball exactly where the high outside guy is supposed to be. So the high outside guy went and tacked the, the lower route, the yeah. shorter route, and left he the hole. He attacked the shorter route. This guy just a little bit. He he he, he attacked the shorter route yeah. when Ben Rosenberger threw the ball, dropped down low, and it left the open air. Francisco tried to do the best he can to try to come over there and make a play, but it was greatness. Yeah. Yeah. It was greatness. That, That's that, why that. football is the ultimate team sport. You can have 10 people doing what they're supposed to do and one person not doing what they're supposed to do. It messes up the entire thing. Exactly right. It was exactly yeah. right. And well, uh, let, I wanted to bounce back real quick to uh, playoff Eli. Like, mm. how, like, what was different? What was the, I guess, you know, the, the switch that went on for him during the playoff? Because he was a different quarterback in the playoffs versus the regular season. Oh was man! It, like what? What you think went into playoff Eli? Listen, I, listen. I, I wish I wish I knew the answer to that, but 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 I don't. I just know that you know Eli. He he has a certain demeanor about himself, and people people 
they misunderstand Eli. You know, they think he, you know, because it's, that's just his look. That's just the look of the man. It's like he can't do nothing about that. But like Eli is honestly one of the, definitely one of the most prepared guys and, and, and confident guys I've, I've ever played with. And more importantly, I know when that time comes, he, he's going to ride. And, you know, I, I never really had experience to play with him in the playoffs, but throughout that playoffs, I'm just seeing a, a different guy. I'm seeing a more rugged Eli. I'm seeing a tougher Eli. I'm seeing a dude that is willing to stand the paint and endure whatever beatings he is going to endure in order to make sure his team is successful. And that's the Eli who we saw during the playoff. It was a guy that there was no holes ball. He was standing in the paint no matter what. And, and listen, I've never seen a quarterback get beat up as much as I saw Eli get beat up playing against San Francisco. They demolished him. And that San Francisco kept, defense were tough, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> they had oh some dogs. Yeah. I, kept, I kept saying to myself, that's it. Like, he ain't getting up. <laughs> he ain't getting up. I, I kept saying, that's it. Like, oh, man, they keep getting to him. That's it. And Eli, get up with that look, shrug his shoulders, fix that, and come right back. So, so, so. I was like, I was like, he made me a fan that day. I was all, I always liked Eli's quarterback, but he made me a fan that day. I was like, that's a bad white boy. I said, boy, that's a bad white boy. <laughs> hey, listen, and, and you know, he carried us, man. He carried us, just his mentality, his leadership. Like, I don't think Eli got enough credit for, you know, I can't speak about Super Bowl prior to what I was there, but yeah. the Super Bowl that I was a part of, he played a tremendous part. And I'm not just talking about just what he contributed on the field. I'm talking about also off the field. So is Eli so, Hall of Famer? Yes. He First is ballot. My, for sure. He yeah. is definitely a Hall of Famer. He's, he's earned that right. right um, he's had that career. I think he's definitely a Hall of Famer. Oh, I got a good one for you then, Ro. You play with another Hall of Fame quarterback in Kurt Warner. So if you had to take one, who you taking, Eli or Kurt Warner? <sighs> um, I think I would. It, it it depends on what 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 are we talking about? We're just talking about just straight quarterback. One game. You need one. You need to win one game because oh, you talked about playoff Eli going to a whole nother level. I'm, I'm, and I'm Kurt taking, Warner, you know, I'm, did some I, pretty I've, good things too. I've seen. I've seen one game. Kurt Warner. I've seen Kurt Warner, uh, you know, we were playing against Green Bay. It was just nothing that we can do. You know, it was just nothing yeah. that we can do. Aaron Rodgers was, I'm talking about, put, Mac had some coverage sometimes. And I, I, I honestly felt bad for Mac that game because his coverage was so tight. Mm -hmm. When I tell you so tight, it was so tight that it couldn't be any better. And Aaron Rodgers was throwing that ball, the back of the receivers, if he no was question. throwing to, to the ankles. I'm like, there's nothing that you can do. There's honestly nothing that you can do. And that guy went into a mode, man. I was like, I went, we went into a cold, Kurt, Kurt, you gotta keep scoring, man. We, 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 ain't stop, we ain't gonna stop him. And he kept scoring like, too. Man. Yeah. That, 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 you know, I, I didn't know, I didn't know he was even capable of that, but I was like, Aaron Rodgers is something different. But no I will still have to go with for one game, I'm gonna take Eli. I'm gonna take Eli for one game. I'm gonna take, and, and that's a very, very hard decision to make because. You know, the surgeon, Kurt put that glove on, he go to work. <laughs> that little, side, goes, little saggy he, glove. He go to, yeah, he go to work. But I just think that, I think that if you put Kurt Warner in the game against San Francisco, mm, I don't think you have that same outcome. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I don't think, I don't know if Kurt would have been able to endure what Eli endured in that game. And that's the only reason why I make the decision that I said. Yeah, because because that was you guys were in San Francisco that playoff in, game in San mistaken, Francisco right? in San Francisco and they yeah. had them boy, they had them dolls in that yeah. team. Justin oh, Smith, man. Patrick oh. Willis, Bowman, Alden Smith. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's the corner name? Uh, Ro um, Carlos Rogers. Carlos Rogers. Carlos Rogers. Uh, yeah. Thirty-eight. 38. Deshaun, Deshaun, Deshaun. Ghoston. Yeah, who, who are coming in that head first. Dante, Dante Whitner. Dante, yeah, Dante Whitner. <laughs> yeah. They had them Dude, I think Amon they Brooks had. was on that team also. He had Amon Brooks. Amon yeah. Brooks. Brooks was on that team, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. They I was surprised. I, I, honestly, I don't know how y'all won that game. Anyway, I was surprised. <laughs> it was a it was, it was drop punt. It, it was, boom, two, two of them. Yeah, two. He dropped two, two. like, back to back. 
it, it was a battle. It was a battle of defenses that game because yeah. we knew they had, they had a kicker that honestly, if they got to the fifty, he it was a possibility he could have made a kick a sixty seven yard field goal. It, 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 it was possible. It was yeah. possible he could have made it. So we we as a defense, we were like, listen, we can't let them cross half field. We can't because if yeah. they cross half field, they won't just keep kicking field goals. So mm-hmm. it was a defensive battle the entire game. Yeah. yeah. Hey, last question for you, Ro, before we transition to the superlative part of this show. I know you're still much involved with the New York Giants. And currently, you know, the expectations are getting higher for the ball club this season with all the additions they've made offensively and defensively. Um, you know, you look at another year Daniel Jones will have under his belt. You get a healthy Saquon Barkley back. Uh, you know, Bradbury play your good football. You signed Odori Jackson. You got Leonard Williams. Um, you know, Galladay was a big acquisition from the Detroit Lions. What are your expectations for the Giants this upcoming season? And what do, do they need to do to turn the corner? I, I think, I think uh, you know, in Judge, they have a, 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 a coach that they believe in. I think they have a coach that understands them as, as an entirety. Um, it's time for them to get back to playing ball. It's time for them to get back to winning. I think they've had so many losing seasons at this point with – a lot of key players that can put you in a position to win, but I think it was just about them judging as a team. And I think they, they found themselves uh, throughout a lot of the parts of last year. Guys are still young. Then, you know, Saquon Barkley going down, that hurt them tremendously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think with the key additions that they have, and I think now with, you know, you got Logan Ryan back there. He's playing some good ball at safety. You got Jabril Peppers. You have Bradbury that, that played just as well as, you know, pretty much any corner in the league last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, not, not maybe – having the, the, the splashes of a lot of corners, but man and man, you know, he played a lot of good ball, a lot of pass yeah. breakups, and that's huge for a corner because that's hard to do. You know, we all know that we've all been on that island. Mm-hmm. So I think now it's, it's the, the guys that they've had there, the Ingrams, the Sterling Shepherds, I think those once those guys play to the level of expectations that we all think that they can play at, and then with the key additions that they have now, I think they can be a team that can be, the, 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 they can be a team to be reckoned with. Yeah, Do you I think, think Daniel Jones is the guy? Yeah, I was just about to say that. You about to ask that question with great minds think alike. You think yeah. Daniel Jones is the guy? I think, I think Daniel Jones. I, I I I can't say he's the guy because you know it's only been two years for him, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you see some great things from him. Then you see some times when he get pretty sloppy. It seems like he forces a lot of passes. Right. You know he has to do better with protecting the ball. And, uh, you know, they they show, you know, he put a little muscle on, you know, in the offseason and stuff like that. Do I think that's going to transition to football? Um, I don't really think so. But I think his mindset, who he has, who he needs to be uh, for that organization and and who they expect him to be. I think he has the skill set. But I think, you know, he he has a lot of work to do. He needs to do a lot of studying. He needs to feel very comfortable within himself and believe in himself that he can go out there and get it done. And I think he can be the guy, but I don't think he's the guy just yet. So long story short, this is a make or break year for Daniel Jones. It has to be. No doubt about it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And I think his biggest problem is, like you, like Antra alluded to, is just turning the ball over. I mean, oh, no question. You can't you win if you turn the ball over. Check the ball. And obviously missing uh, Saquon Barkley is, is a huge you know, dent in, uh, in, in, in the offense. But as a quarterback, you can't turn that ball because you're giving the opposite team more possessions. So mm-hmm. if he understands what he what he needs to do to in order to put his team in a winning position, which is converting on third down, putting the ball in the right place and, and limiting those turnovers, I think he can be the guy because he got all the athletic ability. He's mo- a little, you know, he got a little bit of mobility in him, very strong arm. I think the offense fit uh with uh uh, Jason Garrett being there as the office coordinator, I think that tailor makes his game a little bit. It's just going to come down to Daniel Jones. No question. Turning the ball over. If, if, if he falls on his face this year, not literally speaking, yeah, but just from production, ahead. they're going to look elsewhere no doubt about in 2022. It. I think right now the NFL is only giving these young quarterbacks three years. Yeah. You got three years to really show you can, you could be the future. You know, we saw what happened with the Jets and Sam Darnold. I mean, you got three years to show, you know, what they can, you know, hang their hat on your shoulders to be successful. If not, they're going to be looking elsewhere. So I agree with you guys. I think this is a make or break year for Daniel Jones. Now we're going to transition to the superlative part of the show. Ro, we want your unbiased, honest answer. First question for you. 
Hurricanes Mount Rushmore. We had Santana on the show a few episodes ago. I'm going to read you his Mount Rushmore, right? His top four players to ever play for the University of Miami. He had Michael Irvin, Gino Toretta, Edgerin James, Ed Reed. So who is your Mount Rushmore of Hurricane players? Okay, so I'm going to go two off. I'm going to go two defense. I'm going to go two offense. Gotcha. So for defense, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take Shanti. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going to take Dan Morgan. Okay. Mm. I'm going to take Dan Morgan. Uh, offensively, I'm going to take I'm gonna take Ken Dorsey. Ken Dorsey was a bad boy, man. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the, the, the collegiate Ken Dorsey. So you're taking Ken Dorsey out when you look at all the iconic quarterbacks, you know, Kurt Kors, Bernie Kozar, Gino Toretta, Jim Kelly. You taking Ken Dorsey over all of them. I think his collegiate career is better yeah, than theirs. Do I think he possesses the same talents or you know make transition to NFL? No, but his yeah. collegiate. Quarterback, his, his collegiate quarterback career, I'm taking Ken Dorsey. Yeah, okay. um, and just because, oh, well, you know, I, I might be a little biased just because I know Ken Dorsey was a 6'5", skinny white boy, leading a whole team of brothers, and he was a general. Mm -hmm. He was a general. We followed what Ken Dorsey wanted. Like, he was a general. And for me, that spoke volumes to me because I've never, ever seen that before. I didn't see that before. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and and you know we we follow suit, uh, and then offensively I'm gonna go. Wow, Rush more. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take. I want to say Andre Johnson, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna take Santana Moss mm -hmm. just because of his ability at wide receiver, also his ability at punt return. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Dan Morgan, Sean T, Santana, and Dorsey. Okay. The best atmosphere you ever played in. Ooh. It could be college or in the league. Ooh. Ooh. Um, best atmosphere I've ever played in. Ah. Uh, I'm not gonna say Super Bowl because that's that's obvious. Right. Uh, I would probably have to say. Either Seattle mm -hmm. or Philly. Yeah. Both of Philly, those. Philly, Philly, they, they get wild in Philly. Especially at night. They be they get rowdy during the daytime, but nighttime. <laughs> it's something different. They it's different at night. Wild. They oh, get no, no, wild no. out there. <laughs> yeah, they get wild out there. All right. Next question for you. Oh, this is a tough one here. Start, sit, cut. Who you starting, who you gonna sit, and who you cutting? You got Willis McGahee, Clinton Portis. Frank Gore. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, listen to me with this one. Okay. <laughs> Are we talking about college? We're talking about college. Yeah, college. College. We're talking okay. about college. Before Frank Gore got injured, he was the best I had ever seen till this day. I heard that. The best. Listen to what I'm saying. The vision. Mm -hmm. Cuts. Yeah, he was cold. The best I've ever seen till this day. Never seen nothing like it. Till this day, I've never seen nothing like that Frank Gore before he got injured. What was so, so special gonna, about him before the injury? Man, he, man, he, I, I, he was just different. He, mm -hmm. he wasn't the fastest guy, but you weren't going to catch him if you go. You couldn't tackle him. You couldn't tackle him. <laughs> that was the only running back ever in my career I could not tackle. Yeah, and can't. I'm talking about I have a clean shot. I have a clean shot on him. And it's either he he, he cut off of both feet and he never slowed down. It was like a, it was a smooth, it, it, it felt slow, but you could never <laughs> get him. Yeah. You could never yeah. get him. And then he'll get you off balance and hit you with a stiff arm. Mm -hmm. Then he ran, he ran literally this low to the ground mm -hmm. <laughs> and never changed speeds. Never change speed. Some players they'll give you this and have a shift, and this he never changed speed. When he cut, he never changed speed. So I'm gonna start Frank. Start Frank. Okay. Sit Portis. 
No, we're talking about college, right? We're talking I'm about college. For- <laughs> <laughs> everybody <laughs> healthy. Hey, bro, everybody healthy. No injuries. Because McGay had a, a in, uh, season, yeah. in, well, uh, a, a devastating injury in to college me. also. So everybody healthy. No no scratches. Yeah. Man, McGay, that season, McGay, he had. Oh, mm. my goodness. Yeah, he had like seven mm-hmm. touchdowns against Virginia Tech or something like that. I remember. Oh, man. Nah, he, 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 he carried out to him. He carried out Here's to him. <laughs> I'm, I'm st- I, I just... I'm, I'm still gonna have to. I'm gonna start Frank. Got you. I'm, I'm gonna sit Porter's. I just it's just something about that sweep. It's Porter's. Porter's. He's, he's yeah. just sweet, man. It was. It he was, was smooth he was too. Porter's was smooth, man. Hey, yeah. Porter was just a great combination of all of the both. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Yes. And then I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to cut Willis. I'm gonna have to start. I, I just have to settle for it. I can see that. I, I, that's okay. the right I would have. That's a tough one. That's a yeah, tough it one. is a tough one, but that's the right oh, I would have. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So uh, your first purchase after signing the richest safety deal with the Giants. Uh, my first purchase. Well, I already had everything I wanted. Yeah, I've been saying you already had it. <laughs> but hey, but it ain't nothing like when you get the second contract. Right. right. You're right. <laughs> right. Oh, man. I, I can't even remember, honestly, at that point. I, I don't think it was nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing, nothing crazy. crazy. Uh, yeah, not nothing crazy, man. Cause you know, at that point, once once you have your house and you have your cars, yeah, and you, and you had the, that it, he had the red Mazda, the, the red Mazzi. Hey, hey, I still got it next to Rob. Baby, it's still hey, it's smooth. Too. Hey, you still got your old school too? I still got the dunk. I still hey, got Pat, the dunk. Pat, hey, he got a nice Florida, dunk, man. Pat. He got a nice dunk, <laughs> Pat. I already know, man. We from Florida, man. That's what we saw and grew up. That's With right. The, hey, bro, what you had the four Gs on there? Where was the four G I got the four G on there. Yeah, I got twenty six four G on there. Yes. Hey, what, what, what I need you to do, text me a picture of the dunk, and then when we actually officially sure. drop this, we're going to have it in the YouTube show. All right, I got you. I yeah, got so we're going to put so the dunk. He got a mean dunk, Pat. You ain't never seen his dunk, huh? I think it's blue, right? No, no, it's red. It's can, candy apple red. Candy red. I don't think it's I mean. I what you got under, underneath the hood, bro? It's a, uh, it's a 502. Ooh. This one. Big block. This one. Yeah, it's one. It's the big block. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, so uh, since, you, since you already had everything on your on your on your uh, richest contract, so I'm I'm actually another one. What was your best interception? Your favorite interception, not your best one. Your favorite interception. My favorite interception. They could be in practice because we know a lot of a lot of great interceptions happen in practice. Oh, too. People don't even yes, see. It. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, they do. Yes, uh, but probably my favorite interception was. Um, against the Rams. It was against the Rams. It was 2008 season. Um, I started off, you know, at the beginning of the play, I started off, I think, close to the line of scrimmage. I was roaming. I was roaming at, at, at Nickel. I was roaming. And I started off at the line of scrimmage. And by the time the ball was, by the time the ball was hiked, I was like midfield. And then I ended up all the way back. It ran like a deep post. I ended up picking off that ball. Uh, against the Rams, and that was probably my, my my that was probably my favorite interception, just because I worked so hard, and you know what I mean, like that 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 wasted energy. I worked so hard trying to disguise and everything like that. Right. Once I got the interception, you know, I ran it back for probably fifty yards. But if I wasn't so tired, I could have definitely took it to the house. But right. I think that's probably my favorite. That was probably my favorite interception. Let's do it. Mm, good. Hey, I got to throw this one in there, row. Best Blu Ray player you played against. <laughs> Ooh, the boo king himself, Mac Daddy, baby. <laughs> and Mac got that. He Mac got the title. I give it to him because you know what? I, I've never seen Mac. Man, Mac is the yeah. only one at that table sober, man. They don't count. Man, yeah, yeah. He was so <laughs> hey, 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 my fault. Y'all want to get uh, want to play cards under the under the influence? <laughs> hey, my fault. Hey, but hey, hey, <laughs> hey, Pat Pete. Advantage, man. Hey, no question. <laughs> Hey, we already trying to put something together in Miami. We're going to have some boo, boo players. Roll already gave me the insight. Pat P, I need you there. Yep, yep. <laughs> hey, we're going we to have a nice little weekend, a little shindig oh, yeah. together. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? We're going to hey, find man, a nice location. I'm going to be down there for the Rolling Loud, the 23rd through the 25th. When, when y'all thinking about doing this? I'm going uh, to be down there from July 23rd through the 25th. And I'm gonna be gone. My my son got a uh, the World Jiu Jitsu tournament in Orlando on the 24th, so I'm gonna be gone then. But we'll 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 figure we'll, we'll, we'll something out. We got we got time. We we got time. All we need is like a good two days. That's it. A yeah. day and a half. That's it. Oh, Get yeah. everybody down That's there. It. 
and and somebody gonna get Bop City, and we gonna <laughs> we gonna break bread together, and we gonna boo each other. Oh yeah. Oh, we yeah. gonna boo each other. Trap down there too, man. Ain't seen trapper in a while, man. Yeah, let, hey, let's get all the boys together, man. Let's get all the boys together, man. Have a boo ray festival, man. Boo ray festival, man. Oh yeah, that'll hey, be good, man. Thank you for joining us here. All things covered. Pat Peters and Brian McFadden, man. Pleasure is ours. Definitely insightful, entertaining conversation, man. Friend of the show, you're always welcome to join us at any given time. And don't forget to send me that picture that don't. And we're gonna keep people. We're going to keep people involved about this boo ray date that we're going to have set up and let everybody all know right, who's going to be there. All right. No, I appreciate y'all, man. Love y'all boys, man. All right, bro. Same here, my guy.